Veggie Lucian is an urban community garden that was founded in the spring of 2008 at Emma Pruch Park in San Jose, California by a group of college students. Over the course of three years, the farm has continued to grow and provide organic vegetables at an affordable rate while also providing a safe place for the community to come and work the land together. This is a little story on how one San Jose group is teaching the importance of building community, embracing diversity, empowering youth, and creating food sustainability. I met Mark about somewhere, it must be about three years ago by now, and we were both students at San Jose State and we both independently wanted to garden. And so we had, we didn't know each other yet, but we were both kind of thinking about how we could garden because we both lived in apartments and we didn't have any place to garden. We decided to start working together on one garden in the neighborhood. And um, pretty quickly though, we reached out to more students and we got more students involved and we started another garden and another garden and another garden. And at the same time, our vision for Vegilution and what we wanted to accomplish was getting bigger and bigger. We wanted to bring in more of the community, not just college students. We wanted to bring in youth and families and, you know, a, the more diverse community. So we started looking for a space and we, we started looking at schools and churches. And then a friend was working here at Emma Prush Park at the time. And so she brought us back into the back of the park. And when we saw those 10 acres just sitting there under the freeway, we were like, oh my god, we found it, right? Um, we couldn't believe that that much land is still available. And it's set aside for agriculture according to the plan for the park. Emma Pruch Park was um, a vision of a single woman, Emma Pruch. Uh, this was her family dairy farm, and it was her dairy, the dairy farm for generations. And um, Emma never married. She never lived in this house. She thought this house was way too grand for her, and she lived in a small house next to it. This, this house used to be out on uh, King Road. And uh, in 1962, Emma decided that she had no heirs, and the dairy business was getting rough. It was a hard, hard job for anybody, uh, much less a woman, a single woman. And she decided to bequeath to the city of San Jose an 86-acre plot of land to be used uh, for agricultural demonstration. And her most important goal was that it maintain a rural country atmosphere. In the 70s, but she could stay here until she passed away. Then in the 70s, um, Emma was approached by the Police Athletic League looking for a place to put a, uh, you know, athletic field so that children would have a place to grow up and play. Sports were becoming a very, very important part of our uh, social atmosphere in Santa Clara County. And so Emma gave 12 acres for the Powell Stadium, and then the 280 freeway came by, and Caltrans got their, their chunk of land. And what we have left here is 46 acres, and it's all agricultural. We do our best to make sure that it stays that way. Yeah, so once we found the land back here, we started asking the city park you know, hey, we have this idea, can we use some of the land here? And basically their first response was, you're not even a nonprofit, we don't even wanna to talk to you. Um, so we found the Emma Pruch Foundation, which is a nonprofit that's basically like the friends of Emma Pruch Park. So a group of volunteers formed the Pruch Farm Park Foundation, and we were approved by the IRS in 1982 as a 501c3 nonprofit organization. Our main goal, is to help make sure of the orderly development of this park in an agricultural way. And we were, the foundation was approached by uh, Mark Medeiros. Uh, he came to one of our board meetings. He was very, very nervous. <laughs> and he asked for three acres of land. And uh, because we're, everyone on our board, we're farmers or gardeners anyway. We knew that uh, one young man taking on three acres was overwhelming. So we talked it over and realized that what we would like to do is to recommend to the city that they give Vegilution a half acre to give it a whirl and see if it worked. And if it worked, then we could move on to more acreage. And uh, Mark was thrilled. And before you know it, he and Amy uh, Frischie were out there 
digging. I, I've never seen anybody swing uh, mattock the way that Amy does. <laughs> She's quite impressive. And they worked like crazy to get that little half acre garden in and growing and successful. One of our biggest issues here at the park is the chickens that free range the place and they manage to eat everything that gets planted unless you cover it with chicken wire. And so the board supported it and we went to the city and asked if we could use that land and the city supported us in that endeavor. And so I think that once that uh, Vegolution got their foot in the door, there was no holding them back. They've just done a fabulous job, just fabulous. We're trying to create an organization that really brings the community together around food. There's, in the middle of the city here, there's not a lot of access to agriculture. Um, this valley used to be covered in orchards, right, but it's paved now. And so people in the city, most of our direct contact with food is with the grocery store and those displays, beautiful displays that basically don't change for most of the year. And so people don't have this connection with the land that we used to have. So we really want to give the community a space to reconnect with the land learn why it's important to be careful about what you eat and why it does really matter what you put in your mouth. So I was really concerned about like having all the diverse people of San Jose involved, like included, you know? That means like old folks, young folks, uh, black folks, Latino folks, all the Vietnamese folks, all the Asian folks from San Jose and like make it like a model community, like make it like a place that everybody feels that they belong, everybody has a place, everybody has meaningful work to do, everybody's contributing, um, and just try to like make a little microcosm of a very just and sustainable community. Vegilution is organized so that we can use the most volunteer energy possible. Um, we think it's really important to empower people to take on more leadership when they want to. So um, we have a few staff people and we have AmeriCorps members through the Silicon Valley Health Corps. And we have, then we have a lot of volunteers that do a lot of work. So um, specifically for our volunteer work days, the way that works is anyone in, the anyone in the community is welcome to come and volunteer. People don't need any gardening experience. What made me decide to help garden and volunteer is I work behind a computer every day, like eight hours, 10 hours a day. And so when I come on Saturdays, it just really gives me a time to relax, connect back with the earth, and it's like, okay, this is what I'm here to do. It's really just, it's relaxing. Um, and gives me a chance, it's almost a, like a meditation. I decided to become a, uh, a volunteer intern because I'm doing a sustainable agriculture minor at Cal Poly. And so this is the first time I'm starting to learn about farm and organic farming. I like the people the best, like the interaction with the people I get out here because I used to be an electrical engineer and doing those internships and jobs were like, super lame. People had nothing to say and no opinion about anything except for how to make money. So I really enjoy like, my coworkers and my just like random volunteers and friends and coworkers that come out and just make new friends that way most concerned about getting food out to the direct participants of the farm first like they own the farm the people who participate in the farm are like own the farm and they should get the food you know and that's a big part of having people invested in the farm is like allowing people to take home food like get the benefits of the garden so um, and then we also donate a bunch still to a soup kitchen that takes care of the majority but now we have the farm stand that we're running out in the front of the park, which is really important too because it's not donated, but it's sold at a very low price. So that's about getting food at a low cost out to the community. Another thing that we have is our youth program for high school students called Veggie Youth. And right now we're in the midst of our summer program. We have 17 youth and um, they do a lot of farm work and they learn about cooking. They actually cook together and eat together, and then they, they learn about food justice and the food system, like where our food comes from, and health and nutrition, and um, teamwork and the communication and all that kinds of stuff. And they're having, they always tell us that they're having a really good time, and you can tell that, um, that they're really getting a lot out of it. 
goals of the youth program, the biggest, most important one is to create a community for the youth. Um, teenagers today sometimes, um, there aren't a lot of options for ways to like healthfully occupy themselves necessarily. And so um, we really wanted to create a community where they could feel respected and safe and um, okay to be themselves and open up. Another really big goal of the youth program is to just help foster this really strong connection with land and food and creating a community around those two kind of central topics here at the farm. Well for me, um, the reason that I decided to come here was because I wanted to learn how to start my own garden and pick up uh, skills on how to be independent because uh, I read on the description that there would be cooking lessons and that was something I thought would be very useful. It's been awesome. I touched chickens, I have grew my own plants, which is like the awesomest part because seeing something that you plant to grow, it's like a child. It's awesome. And I made a lot of new friends that I don't think I would ever meet in my life. It's really cool. Met new people. I met people from North Carolina, from other places of the country, and I really like that. Now we're trying some other things, like we're having workshops now on different subjects, like um, like we did one in the spring, like at the beginning of spring, like, okay, everybody, here are the 10 things that you probably want to plant in the next month, you know, and just trying to do some really rudimentary gardening education for people. We're running classes in Spanish now, which was really cool. We did a, um, we worked with a neighborhood group called Somos Mayfair, um, and they're a really strong community organization that we respect a lot, and they work with uh, Latino women a lot and then like the Latino community as a whole a lot but we had their um, group of Latino women that are focused on obesity and diabetes pre prevention do a five-week course here um, and they planted like a traditional Central American garden with all the main staple crops and uh, that was a cool experiment. In the future of Vegilution we hope to expand to more land um, so we can basically scale up everything that we're doing. The more land we have, the more youth we can serve, the more volunteers we can get out here, and the more food we can produce. I would like to see it continuous. I'd like to see more people involved, and um, this way the fruit can go for the homeless. They can sell it, and they can make a profit off it and put it back into the, everything goes back into the park here. You know, I think it is the wave of the future. I think that we're going to have to start thinking about how we're changing the culture of the way we eat. And it's about eating fresh fruits, vegetables, right from our backyard or right from our neighboring um, community facility where we have a garden that brings people together. And they start farming as a community. That's what um, inspired me about being a part of Edulution, and that's what inspired me to be a, a sponsor. And I'm not one of, I'm not the only one that's a sponsor. I had the opportunity to sit down with Kaiser, and they're also a sponsor. So they see the importance about farming right here in your own community, and community people coming together and taking ownership about what they're feeding their families. The one message I would leave to other people is that everyone has a community facility right there in their neighborhood. Work with your elected official and get them to participate. And those of you that have a little bit of money to give, donate to the facility like a Vegilution or other farming um, institutions so that you can be able to walk out your front door and go to your neighboring community center or neighboring farm center and be able to pick fresh fruits and vegetables so that you can take home and feed your family. To me it's been really really um, important to see this, this wave of change as far as bringing the young people into the garden. And I don't just mean six-year-olds. One other aspect that I think has been really critically important with Vegilution is that the Vegilution team is bringing in high school kids and college kids that are on the cusp of this making decisions about major life decisions. And to come here and think about agriculture and think about the benefits of being out in the sun and, and the camaraderie of you know everybody eating together and growing things and understanding I think that's been a really really important part uh, our park is here at King and Story Road which is in East San Jose 
It's a very busy, busy, busy intersection on the police scanners. And to know that this, this park is a safe place. We don't have any vandalism. We have very, very little graffiti. We don't have any kind of issues like that. This is a safe place. This is, this is base, if you will. The kids, the families come here from all over the area. And there's peace here. And I think there's peace here because of the gardens. I really do. When I latched on to gardening um, as a um, as like a as a as a vehicle to do community organizing, um, I just like started to realize that it's very empowering. It's totally positive. It's like transformative. It's uh, it's like a great route to like achieving like social justice and environmental justice and everything. So when I think about how Vegilution has changed my life. Um, that's a funny question because um, I've just basically thrown my entire life into Vegilution and so um, I have no idea what I would be doing if I wasn't doing Vegilution and when, when we came to the point where we were starting it, um, it was this convergence of everything that was important to me into one thing so there was never a question whether I was, was or wasn't going to completely devote myself to this project. Um, so I guess it changed my life by giving me something to pour myself into and really, you know, care about and do. My experience at Vegilution has been really, really wonderful. Um, it was a lot of work on the front end. My coworker Jesse and I literally just created this program. We got here. Um, there was a little bit of a working kind of model or template but not much and so it was a lot of like getting resources on our part and kind of putting together what our vision was and it's been so amazing to kind of see this thing that I put so much work into just take off and um, kind of become its own thing outside of myself and outside of like my ideas and her ideas and um, to watch the youth really like take it over and take ownership of it and um, you know, yeah, like I was saying, how they have really invested in the farm itself, how they've been coming out early and staying late um, to really, um, yeah, to really kind of invest in it themselves. So it's been incredibly inspiring. Um, my experience as a youth program coordinator here at Vegilution has been probably the thing I'm most proud of in my life so far. Um, Coming out here from North Carolina was a little, a little scary, a little daunting because it's a totally new place and a new situation for me. But um, really, just the youth that I've gotten to work with have been so inspiring to me. Just a really, really great group of individuals, and um, just watching them learn and watching them grow has been, you know, it's made all the work and research and, and heart that we put into designing the program totally worth it. And we have to realize that we, as young people, that is our um, heritage, is like people that lived off of the land, people who were peasants, and people who were farmers, and people who were like sustainable people that were not screwing up the world. And so here we are, and we found ourselves all in the same place now, um, and it's like a new society. We have to make like a new society that's more sustainable. That's like my big thing. So. Yeah, I think. Let's do it. Santa Clara County was primarily used for grain because of the soil, the alkalinity of the soil. It was predominantly grains and oats and wheats for cattle industry. Uh, then it started to change when the Pellier brothers came and brought cuttings from uh, Europe for growing grapes, and the grapes were so successful they started growing 
apricots and plums. Actually, the plums came first. And uh, about the 40s, 20s, 30s, 40s, this area became extremely popular as far as an agricultural uh, area for stone fruits. Uh, the, the entire valley had pockets of areas that were dedicated for specific pr uh, fruits. Out by Alviso was pears predominantly. The areas over on Lawrence, used to be Lawrence Station Road before it was Lawrence Expressway, was corn and more annual type cr uh, crops. And so the, the prunes and the plums came in the, the 1800s, but really became a, a, um, an important commerce area during the war. Uh, during World War I and World War II, this valley produced enough food to feed the world. So we were predominantly, we were a, a predominant force in feeding the troops during World War I and World War II. And after the war, it just carried on. <laughs> We, uh, the people that were involved in horticulture, realized that this was a valley of heart's delight. There was everything to delight a farmer and a gardener here. There was food plenty. The weather was ideal, a little hot sometimes, but we had adequate rain in the winter time to sustain us through the summer. So that's kind of where the name came from. It really was a, a valley of heart's delight. Everything you wanted here. We have the the tall uh, redwoods in the Santa Cruz Mountains, and we have the majestic oats, oaks on the east side of the, the valley. So in the proximity to San Francisco Bay allowed us to get cool breezes in the evening. So this, this valley did have a lot to offer. Well, the change started happening in about the late 50s to early 60s. And as more and more uh, need was created for uh, arms and military, food machinery, uh, was, was a big company that made farm equipment, and they switched to making equipment for the government, for tanks and uh, not so much weapons, but tanks and trucks and transportation vehicles. And so in the early 60s, the shift started, although there's still, in the south part of the county in Gilroy, there's still a lot of agriculture down there. Uh, oddly enough, one of our main crops right now in Santa Clara County is mushrooms and cut flowers. And we don't think about that as being an agricultural crop, but they definitely are. So I think the change started in the late 60s and transcended with the onset of the computer, became a very, um, because it was such an ideal place for people to live. People could come here and work. We have incredible colleges, Santa Clara University, Stanford, San Jose State. So people could come here and get an incredible education. And because of our weather, they wanted to stay. And so the jobs were created here. Amdahl and uh, long before Microsoft and all the biggies, there was all these little companies. Hiller Helicopter was making you know, helicopters for the war effort. And so the transition and the people came because of the weather. Uh, we had a, a thriving port uh, at the end of the 18th century at Alviso. Ships did not go to San Francisco. They stopped in Alviso, and the train stopped in Alviso. And so we had train transportation. We had you know, shipping. We had everything here. So, so that was really the transition. It became a very convenient place for people to, to market their products. I think in a lot of ways it made a lot of the old timers really hold on tighter to what they had and to really instill upon their children the values of the orchards and the, uh, the work ethic of being a farmer. Farmers work, you know, 24-7. Uh, the pavement heated up our valley a lot and cementing our canals obviously have made it so that we have uh, the water runs faster into the bay <laughs> and it doesn't meander through like I remember going um, fishing for steelhead in Guadalupe with my dad and steelhead don't run in Guadalupe anymore because it's been so uh, manipulated by man and so um, I think in general economically the the change has been very good socially uh, maybe not so much although here at Emma Proust Farm Park, we have managed to embrace our community. And I am amazed 
every day I run into somebody new at this park that says, I didn't know this park was here. And it's amazing how thrilled they get to come and actually pick an apricot off a tree or to see corn growing. And more and more people now uh, of that generation, the 60s, of which I'm a product of, have come back to the farm as a way for healthy eating and uh, to be an important part of uh, understanding and knowing what we're putting in our bodies. So uh, it's been a, in many ways it's been scary how fast everything has grown, but I think as I said in the beginning, it really instilled with a lot of us the importance of, of understanding about agriculture. But we don't even want to talk to you. Um, so we found the Emma Pruch Foundation, which is a nonprofit that's basically like the friends of Emma Pruch Park. So a group of volunteers formed the Pruch Farm Park Foundation, and we were approved by the IRS in 1982 as a 501c3 nonprofit organization. Our main goal is to help make sure of the orderly development of this park in an agricultural way. And we were, the foundation was approached by uh, Mark Banderos. Uh, he came to one of our board meetings. He was very, very nervous. <laughs> and he asked for three acres of land. And uh, because we're, everyone on our board, we're farmers or gardeners anyway, we knew that uh, one young man taking on three acres was overwhelming. So we talked it over and realized. We decided to start working together on one garden in the neighborhood. And um, pretty quickly though, we reached out to more students and we got more students involved and we started another garden and another garden and another garden. And at the same time, our vision for Vegilution and what we wanted to accomplish was getting bigger and bigger. We wanted to bring in more of the community, not just college students. We wanted to bring in youth and families and, you know, a, the more diverse community. So we started looking for a space and we, we started looking at schools and churches. And then a friend was working here at Emma Prush Park at the time. And so she brought us back into the back of the park. And when we saw those 10 acres just sitting there under the freeway, we were like, oh my God, we found it, right? Um, we couldn't believe that that much land is still available. And it's set aside for agriculture according to the plan. In the 70s, but she could stay here until she passed away. Then in the 70s, um, Emma was approached by the Police Athletic League looking for a place to put a... Uh, you know, athletic fields so that children have a place to grow up and play. Sports were becoming a very, very important part of our uh, social atmosphere in Santa Clara County. And so Emma gave 12 acres for the PAL Stadium, and then the 280 freeway came by, and Caltrans got their, their chunk of land. And what we have left here is 46 acres, and it's all agricultural. We do our best to make sure that it stays that way. Yeah, so. Once we found the land back here, we started asking the city park, you know, hey, we have this idea, can we use some of the land here? And basically their first response was, you're not even a nonprofit for the park. Emma Pruch Park was um, a vision of a single woman, Emma Pruch. Uh, this was her family dairy farm, and it was her dairy, the dairy farm for generations. And um, Emma never married. She never lived in this house. She thought this house was way too grand for her, and she lived in a small house next to it. This, this house used to be out on uh, King Road. And uh, in 1962, Emma decided that she had no heirs, and the dairy business was getting rough. It was a hard, hard job for anybody, uh, much less a woman, a single woman. And she decided to bequeath to the city of San Jose an 86-acre plot of land to be used uh, for agricultural demonstration. And her most important goal was that it maintain a rural country atmosphere. Veggie Lucian is an urban community garden that was founded in the spring of 2008 at Emma Pruch Park in San Jose, California by a group of college students. Over the course of three years, the farm has continued to grow and provide organic vegetables at an affordable rate while also providing a safe place for the community to come and work the land together.
This is a little story on how one San Jose group is teaching the importance of building community, embracing diversity, empowering youth, and creating food sustainability. I met Mark about somewhere, it must be about three years ago by now. And we were both students at San Jose State and we both independently wanted to garden. And so we had, we didn't know each other yet, but we were both kind of thinking about how we could garden because we both lived in apartments and we didn't have any place to garden.